This month rejected BP's request for more time to comply with a settlement over the blast in 2005 that killed 15 workers. According to BP, we're disappointed that OSHA took this action in advance of full consideration of the issue by the Occupational Health and Safety Review Commission. That entity is independent from OSHA. Uh, BP believes that they're in full compliance with the settlement agreement. OSHA apparently does not agree, even though BP spent a billion dollars to improve safety at the plant. Uh, the New York Times reported today uh, that OSHA believes that BP has not put in place a series of steps to resolve faults in the pressure relief system or address residual risks as the settlement required. BP has not provided a valid reason to OSHA, according to OSHA, for that delay. The company has already pleaded guilty to one violation of the U.S. Clean Air Act and paid a $50 million fine. It also paid on a $2.1 billion settlement fund more than 4,000 injury claims as a result of the blast. Well, here's some interesting news. Uh, yesterday in a speech, and we love this picture of him, he's uh, Trenton's finest, actually he grew up not far from us, Joe Plumeri, the chairman and CEO of Willis. He gave a speech out in Chicago, um, not too far from the new Willis building, which used to be the Sears Tower. He said that Willis will not go back to the old ways. He outlined a new commitment to transparency and risk management to restore trust in business. Plumeri proposed to reestablish that trust, which he said is necessary to support, support economic growth. He gave the speech at the Executive Club of Chicago, and uh, for his purposes, he urged businesses to manage conflicts of interest transparently and resolve them in the interests of their customers. As an example, he pointed to contingent commissions in the broker industry, payments from insurance companies to brokers based on the volume or profitability of businesses placed with clients. Contingent commissions, of course, remain a major source of conflict within the industry. Here's Mr. Plumeri. Many in our industry believe that simply telling clients that they are taking contingent commissions make it okay. I disagree. With contingents telling your clients you take them does not resolve the conflict. He said, a time will soon come when Willis and its big three competitors will be allowed to take contingent commissions again. One big insurance broker has already been given the green light to do that, and New York regulated brokers may be able to do so soon. We at Willis have decided already that we're not going back to the old ways. We're looking to the future, and we'll continue to put in place the measures that will enhance transparency, not undermine it. It may mean that Willis will be the only company not taking contingent commissions, but that's okay with me, Mr. Plumeri said. Wow. Well, we'll take that one and underline it and make sure it is indelible ink somewhere. A quick blurb. Apparently, a senior facultative insurance broker has resigned from Arthur J. Gallagher to join Guy Carpenter. Reinsurance Magazine is reporting this this morning. Mark Sherwin, who headed up Gallagher's AIG FAC account, left earlier this week. It's not known when he will start a Carpenter. Neither Carpenter or Gallagher's are reporting any comment whatsoever. It's a big earthquake this morning, 6.9 off the southern island of uh, Japan, down by the Ryukyu Islands. Uh, there were no immediate reports of any casualties or injuries. It struck at 4.03 p.m. local time. It was about 280 miles south of Kagoshima, Japan. Uh, we've kept this in the bin for a few days because of news, but we'll give you the uh, casualty report for the shipping industry as we have it. A uh, 2,000-ton deadweight ship, the, uh, the Philly, uh, suffered uh, flooded engine room and blackout damage in the Caspian Seas. The Azerbaijan Coast Guard is monitoring the situation. That was on October 26th. A tugboat, the Sinya, owned by the Pecora River Steamship Company, sank in the Casco Sea of Abderma Port in Russia. That was on the 26th, no injury or pollution reported. A 300-foot ferry, the Marco Polo, with 41 passengers and 64 crew, ran aground on the Croatian island of Sit on the 24th, no injuries. The accident had been attributed to human error. Um, the uh, ship was operated by a company called Jadrolinja Rijeka. And finally, U.S. and Guatemalan authorities captured a makeshift submarine loaded with an estimated 10 metric tons of cocaine 
175 miles off Guatemala's Pacific coast on October 22nd. Four men aboard the ship were arrested by American agents. If the seizure is confirmed, if the size of it is confirmed, it'll be the largest drug bust in Guatemala. I wouldn't want to be out in a makeshift submarine 175 miles off the coast in the Pacific Ocean at any time, no matter how much cocaine was on board. Well, tomorrow uh, is uh, Halloween, All Hallows' Eve. The next day is All Saints' Day. And um, traditionally, it's been a uh, day for trick-or-treating, people to go around. It's uh, a day on the advent of the Christian Feast Day on the 1st of November. Most, most countries celebrate it in one form or another. It does have ramifications. Really? That, those, that high? Oh, my. One of our reporters, actually, we, uh, we have him out undercover, as you see, with the trick-or-treaters. Um, actually, this is uh, something that really should be, should be looked at. This comes from Global Reinsurance Magazine, actually. Um, today is the worst day of the year for malicious damage to homes. This is according to AXA Insurance and Saga Insurance. Um, AXA expects that home insurance claims will rise by 270% today alone. Saga says that 3.6 million homeowners will face damage to their properties. Such claims, such damage could include broken windows, theft, and damage caused to paintwork by broken eggs. Is that anything else? No, that's it. Last year, 15% of 2,044 people questioned by AXIS said that their house had been egged or flower bombed on Halloween. Police and local officials say it's more effective to display a sign that says no trick or treat on the porch or front window rather than to hide in your house and pretend you're not home with the lights out. Many police stations have printable posters for homeowners to download on their websites. Is, is that true? Would you be less inclined to vandalize a home if it had a sign rather than seeing no lights? So he agrees. So this is very smart from the insurance industry. Well, we'll, we'll monitor this tonight and maybe have an on-the-spot report for you on Monday. Thank you for watching and have a good weekend. Thank you.